In this video, I'm going to talk about the auto fit function in Mach 3 um, software for the Innova sewing machine. So, auto fit requires that you use what we refer to as point to point patterns. And a point to point pattern, the definition of that is a pattern that starts on the left, ends on the right, and the start and end are on the same horizontal line. As long as it meets that criteria, you can use any pattern for auto fit um, and get some really interesting different effects with it. So this pattern would meet that criteria. There's another subcategory of auto fit patterns that are called butt to beak, and they're used for flying geese. I'll show how to use these in a second. But you can see this starts on the left, ends on the right, and it's going to fit into the triangle of a flying goose. So we'll, we'll set this up, but you'll see that, that those are referred to as butt to beak. Auto fit patterns are really a useful pattern type. You can set patterns up on a quilt that look like you've done a bunch of custom work, but they run as easily as an edge to edge where with one stop and one start, but they'll line up to whatever wonky piecing that you're dealing with um, on a customer quilt. So you can charge for semi custom or custom, but it's as easy to set up as a um, edge to edge. So let's start with this and say that this was a quilt that has these blocks on it. I'll bring this pattern on, which meets our criteria. Starts on the left, ends on the right, same horizontal plane. And I select the pattern and go to the auto fit tool. And I've got some choices. I'm going to choose the mouse because I'm not using my sew head at the moment. But normally you would use the sew head because you'd be clicking on the intersections of the block on the quilt. Um, I am going to leave maintain ratio and we'll play around with these settings a little bit. And I'm going to just say begin auto fit. And that pattern will disappear off my screen. And to place that, I would come in here on my quilt and start clicking. And I click a letter U shape. So down the side, across the bottom, up the top. Then I'm going to click another letter U and continue just working my way across the quilt. And like I said, this would line up perfectly with their uh, block intersections. So if they were a little bit off, this doesn't show it. When I get to this last block, I'm going to come out here to the right and just return and click there. And then I'm going to do upside down letter U's to work my way back across the quilt. Um, I would go all the way to the left hand side in this situation, but I'm going to reverse here and complete these blocks. So you can see how you would do your last few sections. So this is one continuous stitch. Now that said, especially for a pattern that had this kind of density, I probably would only do like six blocks at a time. You don't want to work all the way across the quilt because you'll have shrinkage as you sew and your intersections might not line up. So just work a little bit at a time, but you can see that I've got one start, one stop, and it's going to sew perfectly aligned to the quilt. The auto fit function can really make borders super easy. So we'll try a pattern using uh, on the, the border. Let's go ahead and choose this one. So you can see it meets our criteria. Starts on the left, ends on the right. I'm going to say begin auto fit. And I'll use the landmark of my quilt, the block intersections here, to place that. I'm going to skip every other one so it, it's wide enough for the quilt. So I'll come in and place that batch and say accept. And then complete the border, pull another pattern on, begin auto fit, and then start at the corner on my miter and directly above these points on the block in the border. And so you can get a very um, complicated looking border with super simple patterns. It's really easy to draw your own auto fit patterns. And so we'll do one to use around this star pattern. So I'm going to go to my settings tab and I'm going to check um, snap to grid so it comes on. So now you see if you, I look at that again, it says on. And then I'm going to go into the draw menu and I'm going to come down here to arc. And so the snap to grid means that my, my mouse is going to snap to the grid intersections. So I'm going to start drawing here on the left, say begin, click here and end here. On an arc, it does the start and the end first and then the peak of it is your third click. So I'll click here. 
and say done. And that will qualify as a um, point-to-point pattern. So now I'll go ahead and select that, get out of the draw menu, select it, and transform. And you can draw around, trying to get this down here, draw around a um, piece pattern to do some custom work. So I'll now go to auto fit and say begin. And we can start, let's start here. And I can start drawing around, oh, you know what, I still have the snap to grid on. I want to take that off. Choose the pattern, begin auto fit. You can start drawing around your piecing and you can find ways to go long distances. So I'm going back and forth here. Maybe I would come here, back up here, doubling back. And so you can end up doing some really interesting custom quilting with just an arc. Uh, you can probably do this entire pattern or this entire quilt block with this with only one start and one stop if you kind of play around with it. Hexagons are great fun using point-to-point -point patterns if they're designed right. So I'm going to pull one on here that I designed several years ago. Say begin auto fit. And I'm going to click on these corners and it will place that pattern in a flower shape around my hexagon, my um, grandmother's flower garden. So I'll say accept. So you can see that it's going to be really accurate and stitched nicely uh, and gives you a great secondary pattern. Here's another pattern that would work with your hexagons. You have to just kind of play with them and, and test them to see. So going to auto fit, I'll say begin, and click in those same intersections around the hexes. So that kind of gives you a fun texture as well. Let's do one more pattern for the hexagons. Let me come down here. Let me pull this on, auto fit, begin. And you could work your way around the pattern one direction and then reverse to get the rest of the flower formed going the opposite direction. We talked a little bit about but to beast but to beak um, flying flying geese patterns and I'm going to pull one of those on here and show you how you would use that in auto fit. So if I go say begin, you can click on the butt of one goose in the beak and then the beak of the next one and place those patterns on a flying geese block. There are other patterns that will fit in these triangles. And so let me pull one of those on. You want to kind of pay attention to how it's designed and just do some experimenting. But to use this pattern, if I remember right, I will click going backwards here. And if you hold your mouse in the same spot and double click, it will um, flip it. And so I can see I've got my height fixed. And so I'm going to go ahead and delete that and go back to maintain ratio and try that again. So let's bring that on, begin, and it should fit in those triangles. Double click to bring it down, double click, double click, double click, and say accept. And then if I bring another one on, I should be able to click this one without double clicking and place those side triangles going this direction. When you're using AutoFit, if you have the maintain ratio checked, it's going to resize the, the um, pattern to fit between your clicks. So let me just show you that. If I click close, it's a small pattern. If I click further away, it's going to resize it. I'm going to leave that on for the moment and show you how you could use this pattern in some curved flying geese. So we will just click along here. And you can see that even though some of the points are different distances, it's going to place that pattern. I might have to do a little bit of tweaking to, uh, to alter some of these shapes, but for the most part, they drop in there really quickly. 
several years ago, there was this um, quilt pattern that was out called a 10 minute quilt block. And you can still look it up online and super easy to piece quilt goes really fast. And I came up with this pattern to quilt it, which was almost as fast as making it. So we'll bring that on, go to our auto fit and I'll start here and click and it will place those patterns around their center sort of cathedral window shape that had they had on this quilt and I'll work my way back this direction so you can see it was super quick to quilt out once all those auto fit were done we just dropped in this little star pattern and resized it for the center of this five our 10 minute block I've redrawn another one of our arcs and so I'm going to use that to do some diamonds here and I'll just start in the center and work my way out and you can see that you can adjust the height of it and do again a continuous line design that goes all the way around this shape. So we'll finish that up. Say accept. Let's draw another pattern. So I've gone to settings and I've turned my snap to grid on and then I'll go to the draw menu and leave it online and say begin and I'm going to start over here and this is my midpoint come to my end point and draw this shape so I've ended on the the right which is how these patterns will work as an auto fit and when you do a pattern like this you might want to export it um, save the pattern and bring it back in and label it as a point to point but for now we'll just go ahead and use this so I'll select it go to my auto fit icon and we can do these diamonds coming down this way oh you know what I still have that snap to grid on so we can auto fit and you can work down these rows of diamonds and then come back up and complete and get some really great shapes in there. If you've drawn a pattern that you want to save for use using it on other projects then select that pattern using transform so you've got these purple handles go to the file menu say save pattern and you can save it here or you can also go to the file menu and say export pattern so I'm going to say export selection and what you want to do is pay attention to this file path because it's pretty long and tedious it goes the default it takes it to this PC to the C drive to program files times 86 ABM software autopilot data patterns that's where it puts the ones that you you uh, create so I'm going to say um, three pointed um, triangle point to point and go ahead and export it and so then if you want to bring it back into your projects you'll have to go back out to import pattern navigate to where that was so see program files ABM software autopilot data patterns and you can see it right there to double click to bring it into my files import I'm going to go ahead and um, tag that as a jukebox pattern and as a uh, point to point if I can find it quickly right here and I'm going to say import and now I can go into my pattern library and bring it back into my uh, my pattern pads so let's go ahead and search down here for jukebox by tag search and it'll be in here somewhere right there so I can double click and then it's available to me to use as a, a pattern at any time this is a pattern set that we designed a couple years ago that just shows the versatility of point to point and I'll show in a sec how it turns out on quilts but it actually um, is a point to point setup so I clicked here and then at the base of the tree and it placed 
these patterns around these odd shapes. So in this situation, I put here and the base of this tree. And so we went around and did that um, to quilt these, these background areas, working around some dimensional elements that we didn't want to pull across. So on the rest of this quilt, we continued to use AutoFit. The next was to do these border sections. And you can see from the arrows where I put the start in the end to create these little arcs of the border around the, the Christmas trees in this quilt. On the final part of that same Christmas quilt, we did this um, angled Christmas tree border, kind of a candy stripe border, using point to point. And I'll show you in an upcoming video, probably in a month or so, how to draw a whole bunch of different patterns that you can then use for point to point or setting up in borders and blocks and around appliques that you'll find really useful. My goal is that you have about 50 patterns that you can use. So, so watch for those coming up. And as always, let us know what we can provide you. Or if you have anything additional that you'd like us to add to this video, let me know and I'll put it in here and, and republish it. Thanks so much for attending.